Good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to start our community engagement committee meeting. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, any public comment on the agenda? Okay, I'll turn it over to Jess. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, so I wanted to um, bring to the committee um, an, an idea that I had to do a communication survey of the school district and all of our district stakeholders, with the purpose being that um, we can use this information to enhance the many tools that we have and maybe add some that we don't, or um, you know, just, just get ideas really from our, our stakeholders about um, what we could do better and, and what we could um, you know, add to our, our toolbox. Um, so we have uh, right now, um, you know, maybe we can find out from people if say they want to see something different on the website, a new website design or refresh, upgrading our email blast or phone text system, those types of things, maybe even adding an app. That was something that um, one of the board members who couldn't attend had suggested. Um, and some, you know, some districts definitely do use an app to communicate with their stakeholders. Um, and, I, and so tonight I was kind of going to go through um, a draft survey that um, I developed. And sorry, thank you. And if uh, I can send the link of the survey to everybody if you want to look at it in greater detail later, because it's probably going to be hard to see some of the slides just because of the way we had to um, show them. Um, so the first uh, questions that we would ask in the survey are obviously just, you know, what is your relationship to the district? Are you a parent, employee, taxpayer? What's your age? Which schools do your, your children attend? Um, and then um, one thing that I'm really interested in finding out is how people uh, access the website. Are they using a mobile device? Um, as we were just discussing prior to the start of the meeting. Um, you know, are they using a desktop? Um, we want to obviously have tools that um, work best with the things that people are using to access our information. And then, um, it's, I'm sorry for the, this is kind of hard to see, but basically I tried to um, list all of the different types of information that we share on a regular basis with our community and then ask people, you know, what, how important do you think this information is? Um, that's what you see on the left. And then on the other side is how would you like to receive that information? Is it better if we text you? Is it better if we email you? Um, so try to get a feel for um, you know, how people want to receive their information. And then uh, one of the questions that's not shown again, just because it was a lot of words, <laughs> was um, how they would rank the types of information uh, by how useful it is to them. So you know, maybe there's things we don't need to share that um, you know, people find that they they just don't use it. Um, and then um, some questions about frequency of communication from both the school, school level and the district level, and then um, whether or not the messages they get. And primarily, we're talking here about emails that we send out from the buildings um, or from the district level um, that are, you know, are they timely, uh, have enough information, are they easy to understand, or do, are people still left with questions? So just getting an idea for how we're communicating. And then, um, broken down, I have a section on the website, um, you know, because I think that is a major way of how we communicate our information to the public. Um, and, you know, asking people how often they visit, what they're looking for, um, whether or not they find the website easy to navigate, if it looks, you know, is it easy to navigate even if you're on a mobile device, all those types of questions. Um, you know, if there's one thing you could change, what would it be? And then if we, you know, find that there's enough response here that we might consider a redesign or a refresh of the website, maybe we could ask some people if they'd want to join in and participate in a focus group so that they could help us to shape, uh, you know, our, our website moving forward. And then there's a section on social media, um, just again, trying to gauge where our, where our stakeholders are. Um, you know, what, what are they using? Is there something we should provide that we're not offering? Um, you know, we, we offer a lot, so I, I can't, I don't know if anybody's going to suggest TikTok, but, you know, say maybe we want to go in that direction. Who knows? <laughs> um, and I, I should add LinkedIn, right? Because we, we do have a presence on LinkedIn. I, I forgot about that one. Um, so, again, you know, just, just trying to get a, a feel for what people would like. And 
you know, we, we do have schools, our, our, all of our schools have Twitter accounts um, to what degree they're used varies by the school. So again, you know, would your child, would you like your child's school to have presence on social media is something else I'd, you know, we'd be interested in learning. So, and then, you know, the open-ended, what other feedback would you like to share with us um, to end the survey? So are there any thoughts you, you folks have about um, what, what you might want to know or things that weren't included on that? Um, draft survey? I, I had a question about the social media. Um, with the social media, who's maintaining the social media for each of the schools? Um, so I think at the high school, it's it's uh, the principal. Well, it's, it's usually the principals um, okay. if they have an account. Um, yeah, I think uh, Dr. Bacani manages at the high school. And then the other the other accounts, they haven't been utilized very, very much of late. So I you know, was looking through just to see when the last posts were. And they were, you know, they were kind of old. So <laughs> I don't think there's a lot, um, a lot of activity happening on some of the other Twitter accounts that we have for schools. And you did say LinkedIn. It wasn't up there, but we do have a LinkedIn account. Yes. And that's at the district level, or is that at the school levels as well? District level. District level. District mm -hmm. level. Okay. And then you were, my other question I had in my head, but I think you answered it already in terms of focus groups. So a pun results of the survey, the, the concept and the idea is to potentially start focus groups to help um, maybe make additions to the website or make changes to the website. Okay. Yeah, so, so if we were to, you know, say embark upon a redesign or, you know, looking at other vendors or anything like that, we'd certainly want to have input from parents, students, you know, and community members, anybody who would use our website to help us, you know, to determine what, um, what it could look like, how it could be better. Okay, and so I'm glad you said that because I just thought of another question. So, who's the survey going out to? It's because you mentioned community members. Is it all? Is it going out to all? Yeah. All so, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to touch on that. That was on one of the slides. But um, my my uh, my goal would be to send it out via email to, to all of our parents. And we also have um, we have a pretty healthy uh, gold card list, which is our senior citizens, uh, 65 and older, who live in the community. So we could add that to import that into our email blast system and, and, and get some of them, um, but also on the website and, and via social media, because again, social media is not just um, parents, it's you know, anybody who has an interest in our district, so we hopefully can reach some of the people who aren't um, parents that way as well. Yeah, I, I appreciate that because I don't have kiddos, um, and so I <laughs> would love to, you know, take the survey. Um, quick question around uh, language access um, for families whose first language is not English. How will they? Uh, how will the survey be translated, or how will they gain access to it? Okay, um, I, we have translation um, capabilities through Final Sight. Is that how, yeah? Yeah, on every page at the top of the page, there's a translate button. So that would be probably how it would go. This is a Google. It was a Google form, but that was just what I used to, to create it because I don't know. I'm familiar with Google and not as familiar with Final Sight, but we would probably use Final Sight to send it out, and that way it could be translated. Yeah. So. Are the surveys going out? Um, I was hoping sometime this spring, as long as everybody's okay with that. So um, you don't think parents are surveyed out at this point, right? I mean, there was a period of time where there were a lot of surveys going out. But. I was just saying, I'm thinking we haven't done too many. Right, right in the last couple of months, so okay. Do you have any concern about the length of the survey being too long to get the feedback that you actually want to do? Be put in, is there any direct consideration to this information is important and I want this information more than just having a large survey? Yeah, um, because you, because you were looking at those long lists in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, certainly we could sort of rearrange things to, and and maybe I can you know, cut down on that list a little bit. I was just trying to think of all of the things that we try to communicate about. Um, but yeah, I could rearrange the order if you think that that would be, you know, better to to, uh, <laughs> to make sure people finish it. So. so maybe, like I noticed in that long list that you called out the various types of events. So maybe just that could be one question and then those, the events would be an option. So they can choose up to whatever number um, and then they can choose what types of events are they most interested in, and that'll cut it down a lot. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. 
In terms of accessibility, have we, I know what this is going to be posted on the website and other spaces, but will there be any paper copies made available at the place at the community center or in school counters for staff or for family members community to just pick up and fill out while maybe waiting for children to come down for early dismissal, things like that? Sure, we could certainly do that. Um, yeah, I, you know, any way that we can get people to participate, um, I'm, I'm all for that for sure. And we could even, you know, Kim and I will be going to community events coming up in, um, what are they, in April and, and June. So, I mean, that would be another way that we could um, reach people that we might not otherwise typically get. Um, if people stop by our table, we could hand them out. But if they even have like, I don't know, but, you know, internet access will be like out there, but have a laptop because you might have like families with small children who have not started in the district. Yeah. Yet, and they might also, you know, provide some information about, you know, how what they're looking forward to and um, how they'll best tune into what's happening around, around the district. Sure. Good idea. Any other thoughts? Kim, did you want to touch on the senior citizens matinee real quick? <laughs> I just want to mention. I just want to mention that uh, we are having the senior citizen matinee this Saturday, and um, it's it's a great event. There will be over three hundred senior citizens there. So if if you can make the the show, that's great. But even if you can't, if you want to just stop by, say hi. You know, uh, they love it. They they'll they'll definitely love seeing you and and you know putting names with faces. Uh, it's eleven thirty. It starts at eleven thirty. It's eleven thirty to one. Saturday. Yeah, and um, yeah, and if you're interested in seeing the show, you can let us know. And just a shout out to the show. It was fabulous. I saw it yesterday. Um, I mean, the talent is through the roof, like the kids did an amazing job. So definitely worth going to see. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> There's two policies that we're going to review. I apologize. Policy 216 and then policy 249. Yes. Okay. The first policy is our student records policy. That's policy 216. And this is really an update of an existing policy 216. And every now and then we do have to go over um, and make sure that our policies are in compliance with the most up-to-date rules and regulations. And this um, policy was looked over by PSBA and deleted some of the um, old language that was used and incorporated newer language um, and to make sure that it was up to date. So basically what this policy does is recognizes our responsibility for the collection, retention, disclosure, and protection of student records. So. Um, and, and also how we reproduce student records, what constitutes a student record. Um, and in addition, it, um, we are, this, this policy tells us that we are responsible for creating a comprehensive plan for the maintenance and dissemination of student education records. Um, and so that in order that we comply with whatever the federal um, and state laws are pertaining to student records and that we are in compliance with the Federal Education um, Protection Act, um, FERPA, um, for students. So this policy does go through the definitions of each of the items. Um, what, what constitutes directory information, what should be included in that, um, what should not be included in that, what constitutes an educational record. Um, and I think that what people think, I know growing up I remember my parents saying, you know, you better be careful or this will go in your permanent record. Well, <laughs> not everything is permanent and not everything is a record. Um, so really, this does delineate specifically what a record is. Um, oftentimes, we will get requests for a student record for um, the student's complete file. Well, there is not 
an individual file. There are records that are kept in a number of places, and not everything that is um, uh, that that a student does is saved as a record. So I'll oftentimes say, get something saying, and I want all of the teacher's notes on my child, and unless something is maintained and shared um, with others, it is not, in fact, a student record. So, um, so this, does um, this does delineate what a student record, in fact, is, whose responsibility it is, and then we get into the guidelines of what a student record is. So this is all delineated here in fascinating language. Um, um, and also and with all, all of the laws, the laws that the support laws it. That support it. Um, are there any questions about any questions this, about policy, this policy, just policy, just the policy, and, the and then I'll go into the administrative, the administrative guidelines, that guidelines that we have. Any questions about this? Questions it's, pretty about this. Lengthy, it's pretty lengthy, um, and it's very, um, and very, it's very specific. Very specific. So, you know, there are certain things that we can share with parents, and then there are other things that we cannot. For example, if something is um, protected by publisher rights, a parent can view it, but a parent cannot have a copy of it. So this, this so really does this distinguish, really distinguish between, between what, can what can be disseminated <clears throat> and what can be just viewed. Can be just viewed. Okay. And Karen, I'm sorry, just, Karen, I was trying to scroll just, through and I, I, through and I it's, it's a lot, so I couldn't get my answer. <laughs> it's a lot of it. You may have the answer. So this is education, discipline, is this all student records? Correct. All, so it would be categories. health records, so be health records um, um, academic, academic records, records special education special records, education records, um, records. Um, Discipline um, records. Discipline. Um, all of the um, things, um, all of the uh, things uh, registration, uh, registration records. Registration records. <clears throat> Anything that mentions, Anything a, student's that mentions name. a student's name. So that, that could so include that could um, information, um, information about a student, about a student that's, that's, placed that's placed where a student, where it's, where it's identifiable to that particular, to student, that particular student, student in form of an email. In form of an email. So anything that is, so anything maintained, that is by maintained by the district, by the district would, be would, be would be considered and identifiable to a student to a would, student, would be considered a student record. A student record. Now, if you look at the next look attachment look the next that's in there, which is, in there, which um, is the student um, records, the student admi records administrative, administrative guidelines. guidelines. This is this basically something is basically that's a fluid, document, a fluid document that would guide, that would guide us. Us, in how we in keep how we these records, these records. Where, we store them, where we store them, what we're able to, what how we're able to, how, how, how we're able to share we're them, if we're, we're able to share them, them and share with them, whom, and, 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 under and under what circumstances. If you scroll, if down, you scroll down to... to Page. Page, very lengthy, very lengthy. Um, um, page 12, page 12. This chart, this chart discusses the record retention, the record schedule, retention schedule, because oftentimes, because oftentimes we, we, ourselves, we, we, ourselves, we ourselves wonder, we ourselves wonder um, how long do you have to keep a record? Um, keep a record? And this does, and this does delineate, delineate the categories of records, categories that, we of records that we have and how long we have, to keep, long them. We have to keep them. There are some records that we There's actually keep for 99, keep for 99 years. years. So a student's so transcript, for example, for and that gets turned into, gets turned um, into uh, um, uh, well, we used to do it on microfiche. I don't know what they do it on now. Um, but we, we utilize the services of the Chester County IU to store that information. And you'd be surprised. I will get record requests from people saying, I graduated in 1956, and I would like my transcript. Um, 
and um, we can provide and that if provide if we that. if they did if, in if fact graduate from, graduate from here and, and um, we would have that information. Have that information. I often get requests often from get Social requests Security. From Social Security. Um, um, so with permission, so with and, we permission get, and we do get permission. Um, we do have to get releases um, signed. Release sign, then we can release that information. Release that information. The language and in, in some of this says retained for whatever number of years after the student ceases to be enrolled in the district. So that account that, that doesn't necessarily mean they graduated from the district. It's just that they may have left transferred out. Correct. And it's six years from the point that they left the district. And if they return, does that six years? Does that the number of years they they were towards come back? Come so meaning back. that if they were so here for three years, they, they left years, after a year, year, came back, back and did, and you know. If, if someone, is the, is the count start, the, the, the clock start over? Right, well, it depends. Right. So if well, they depends. left so and it's prior, and, and they returned prior, prior, prior to the amount of time that we're keeping that, then we may not, then we would have it. If not, then they would actually bring with them records from where, from whence they came. And so when a student so does a student transfer, transfer does back here, transfer we, back do, here, request we do request records. And the purpose of having, for us having the records having would be records so that we could appropriately, so program, appropriately for program for that. What this also says, this also if you scroll says, up, you scroll and this is up, often this a question I get to, question um, I scroll get up to page 11. I will also oftentimes will also get oftentimes requests for get requests records, and for some records, students, you can well imagine it's hundreds of pages. Hundreds of pages. Um, the school um, district the school does, district in fact, does in um, fact, first of all, a, a parent, all, a can, parent come can come in or a student can come, can come in, in and view the records, and, and we usually will collect them. We have 45 days to collect records, and they can view the records and indicate if they would like any copies and specifically what records they would like copies of. Or they can say, I would like to have all of the records copied for me, please. We may, we may charge a nominal fee, a nominal fee for that, for and that. we do and charge 25, we do charge cents, 25 a page cents a page for that. And parents are and notified, parents so are I just notified. received a request, so received a, request um, a, couple um, a couple days ago for a student's for a entire student's educational entire records, educational and records. I do write back and, and I, I indicate that not indicate everything that, that you're describing is a record, is and, a record. I and I do indicate what may or may not be a record, may may a record. Um, and do um, offer and do a parent to come in. And view, we, we would and let them view, know when everything has been everything gathered has from been its gathered various, from sources various sources and locations, and, locations, and that we could, and that um, we do could have the parent um, review the records um, at a central location, um, a central usually, location district usually district office, office with an administrator, with an administrator usually me. Usually um, me. And they can and let they us can know if they would like anything copied, like and if copied, so, that would be a fee of 25 cents a page. So we do let them know up front. Them know up Were you referencing when you said uh, being, requested, being requested third party, third party by a third party? Is that what no, you this oh, was no. a parent oh, requesting oh, their okay. own child. Right. If I do get so, oftentimes, oftentimes we will get something from attorneys. We will get. Um, Request um, from request another school. From another school. Um, you can um, make school to school make transfers, transfers of records, of records. Um, usually um, transcript, transcript uh, grades, uh, grades um, health records. Um, health records. Um, we, we will ask for permission, but you can do it without permission under, under FERPA. Um, however, we do get a parental request to, um, to transfer records. Um, but if, um, if we but do if, get if a third party, get like a private party, school, can you please send? We do ask for release of records, of records um, signed, by signed, by signed by the parent. If a student is over student the, is age, over of, uh, the age of 18, uh, 18 we ask 18, for their signature, we ask as for well. signature as well. Any questions about Any this? Questions it is very complicated, very complicated, and um, I would be and, um, I would not be telling you the truth if I said that I have committed this to memory. I do need to, to, to check on to things. Check on um, things. Um, it does get confusing. Um, does get confusing. And, and when in doubt, I do contact, in doubt, our, I do our, contact attorney. our attorney.
Okay. Do you know the major changes you know from the, the previous policy? The previous Pardon me? Do you know what the major changes Pardon are from the, the previous policy? The previous okay. policy. No. no. Couple wording, couple but nothing wording, major. But nothing major. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Um, um, let's see. Let's the see. Second, the policy second policy is policy 249, 249 which is our which bullying, is our and, bullying cyber and cyber bullying policy, policy which policy, was which approved was by the board in 2018. Board in 2018. And, we and we are just required to look it over and review it and see if um, everybody um, is everybody okay is with that or if anybody, um, if the board um, would like board to recommend any like changes recommend to any this. Changes it's pretty comprehensive and this hasn't been recommended for recommended revision by um, the by, Pennsylvania um, School Board Association, um, or I would have brought that to your attention for revision. Um, but we just have to show um, that we, we did review it, it um, annually. Um, annually. And again, this policy again, does this go policy through the definitions, through the of, the what definitions of what is, bullying is, um, what constitutes um, bullying. What constitutes bullying. Who the authorities, the authorities members, are members are in dealing with bullying, dealing with bullying the delegation of responsibility, delegation of responsibility and, then and then, of course, the guidelines and reference to the laws and um, statutes and, um, that statutes support it. That support it. Any, questions about, Any that? questions about that? Okay. And that concludes our policies. So I guess we would move the student records policy to the board meeting for um, approval of first read. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, the, uh, no, there are no other items. No, that's okay. no, that's okay. Wait, any public comment? Any public comment? There is no public comment no at public this time. Uh, I believe there was believe one, there was, I'm sorry. one there something was one to be read, um, and I'd be happy to read that. Um, there was an email read for public comment. Um, um, written by uh, written parent, by, uh, um, parent um, Dr. Katie Giovannisi. Um, she's a parent um, she's of three a parent and a former three, colonial former school board school employee, board employee and, a and a member of the district. Of the um, district. The email reads, good evening, my husband and I follow Colonial News and subscribe um, to the Colonial Alumni page. Nothing warms our hearts more than seeing the success of our Colonial Bocce team. Knowing many of the students and their parents, it creates such a sense of hope and promotes inclusivity among the community. So our question is, prior to high school, are there any team-oriented opportunities for special needs students to social and compete and compete on a unified team. If not sports, are there clubs to promote friendship, citizenship, or increased involvement prior to CMS and PW? This year, due to COVID, select Special Olympics sessions were canceled. We have received information on other special needs organizations, but many take place well beyond the boundaries of the district at odd times. Our 10-year-old would benefit from a similar type of program that PW W offers to students after school um, on campus with colonial students cheering in the stands. Thank you in advance for your time and any assistance the district can offer. Best, Dr. Katie Giovannisi. Um, I can tell you that um, all of our students, uh, both students with disabilities and those without disabilities at the K through five level, uh, do participate in all of our activities. Um, we have students with disabilities who are members of our chorus our band, school plays, um, before school hockey, um, and girls on the run, um, any of our activities, um, certainly um, sometimes as kids get older and activities become a little more difficult. Um, I think sometimes uh, the participation by students who do have some significant difficulties might wane, although I can tell you that many of our students are on um, sport teams. Um, 
Um, I, both at the middle school okay, level middle and the high school level and do participate in the school play school and band and, and chorus, and et cetera. Um, I do want to highlight, um, want to that, highlight the that the Best Buddies Friendship Buddies Program at CMS at and CMS at PW and High at School, PW school uh, build one-to-one -one uh, friendships one between people with and without intellectual and developmental disabilities. Club members play games and engage in other fun activities with their buddies several times throughout each month, both during the school day and on weekends. Um, PW Best uh, Buddies have also um, paired with students in our life skills class um, at the Edward Marsh Elementary School. Um, but we certainly can explore this area further and see how we can expand upon the activities that are provided. Um, we certainly want all of our students to be included and to have activities and opportunities for friendship with their peers. And, and Karen, if you're responding um, to the person in writing, if, I guess I would like some clarity. Is, is her question for more activities for children with disabilities only? Because what you mentioned, um, like I'm fully aware that it's, they're, not aware they're not excluded from mm -hmm. participating in, in any activity that the school mm -hmm. is providing, but is her question more um, specific activities that are for children with disabilities only? Not that you know the answer, just as we're responding, just so that we can get clarity on what her question is. Okay. Okay. Well, and, and we can reach out. And we can okay. reach out. Thank you. Okay. No more public comment? No more public None comment. at this time. All right, thank you. Right, thank so you. with that said, so this meeting is adjourned. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Good evening, all. Good evening, all.